My name is Piet de Spain. I am a private chef, also a traveling private chef. So I get to travel with my clients um, if and when they choose to go to different places other than where we are located, which is California. So I originally went to uh, college for marketing, business marketing in Kansas at Kansas State University. And I spent a few years there, got my associates, and then realized that it just wasn't for me. And so I dropped out of college, which my parents were not the happiest about because um, I come from a family where um, education is important because my parents didn't necessarily have a formal education. So there's a lot of pressure um, to have a college degree and you know, kind of be able to like, um, change the trajectory of our family's like history when it comes to education. So there was a lot of pressure on me. I dropped out of college and I spent a few years just trying to find myself. You know, I'm in my early 20s. I don't know what I necessarily want to do with my life, but I didn't feel like my place was at university. I felt like there were some other things that I wanted to do. It took a few years of like, you know, trying to go to college part time and working, you know, full time. And it got really hard um, trying to manage school and work at the same time because now I'm an adult and I'm in the real world and I have to pay bills and I have to pay for my own school tuition now. And so I started finding cooking to be very like therapeutic for me, especially just like as an adult dealing with stresses. I was just wanting to cook all the time. I was like hosting dinners for my family, for my friends. And one thing led to the next and my, fa my, my friends were saying, you know, you're really good at this. And I was very interested in, in the way that like the physical appearance of food of like plating things and like trying to like find, you know, new ways in, to cook things and learning about different techniques and different cultures and different types of food. And so I was at that point where people started seeing and noticing like this thing seems to make you really happy. You should look into maybe doing this as a profession, as a chef. One day a commercial came on the TV and um, they were advertising, um, there was a culinary school advertising these tours that they were having of the school. And so I called the number and I didn't realize there was a culinary school in my city, in Kansas City, because it's, it's a fairly small city. I really found myself during culinary school and I didn't know what I was gonna do with it in the beginning, but as time progressed and I learned more about the different roles and the different opportunities that having a culinary background offers, I found out that you could be a private chef. And I was like, perfect, I don't have to work for anybody. I can be as creative as I want. I'm a business owner. I went to school for business because I wanted to work some realm, you know, somewhere in the realm of business, owning a business, operating a business, knowing how to do it successfully. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a private chef. I'm just gonna be my own business owner. How I got to become a traveling private chef is just by meeting new people, um, meeting new clients, finding clients that you really like to work for, work with, and um, I really started to work on my social media platform and just putting more of my food out there so people can see my abilities and obviously share ideas with other chefs and I was able to use social media as, as kind of like a, a gateway to connect with other people, chefs, people that are interested in food. Social media is a great um, way to connect with people like all over the world, which is amazing. And so someone found me on Instagram and they saw my food and they said, wow, your food looks really great. Like your online presence seems like you're a nice person and you're passionate about what you do. Would you be interested in working for our company? It's a luxury, traveling luxury company where we are placing chefs in um, these exotic places all over the world with families that like to travel. These are our clients that have been with us for many, many years. And so I said, yes, of course. I'm like, I get to travel and I get to like cook for people. I'm also very proud of my heritage. And I like to be able to share my upbringing, my culture, who I am as a person to the table. Like, so I specialize in indigenous fusion cuisine, which is something that I've recently decided that I'm going to really work on and um, sharpen my skills on because as an indigenous person, I understand that there is 
a short, a very small percentage of representation of me, of people like me in the world and the U.S. And so if there's anything that I can do with my career, it's to be able to highlight my culture and to show the world and show everyone like, hey, like we are here, this is our food, this is our culture, because you don't get to see this every day. You know, you're not driving down the restaurant and see Native American Mexican food, or you'll have Mexican food, but it's a certain type of Americanized Mexican food. There's so much more that comes with our culture, um, more than just tacos and burritos. You know, there's a there's a lot of history. Um, there's a lot of a lot of history, good and bad. And right now, I think there's a big movement on um, food sovereignty and um, representation, identification through food when it comes to. Mexican um, natives and Native Americans.